Okay. Um, so for our guests, we uh, are in our 50th anniversary year of uh, this club, and one of the things that we've done to honor the past 50 years is uh, have our former presidents come up and reflect on the year that they were president. Uh, and today I would like to call up past president Eric Grunwald to do his. It's hard to believe that I, I'm a past, 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 past president because it, it seems like I was just president a couple of days ago. <laughs> but I'll never forget, uh, this is 2005, it's right after a December board meeting and uh, Matthew Kane and Donovan Hudgens say, Eric, I want to talk to you. Everybody wants to talk to everybody in Rotary, that's what it's all about. I said, what's up, fellas? I said, come here. Now, we know you're about to drive this ambulance down to Waveland, Mississippi, but, but don't be a baby because Matthew's going down ahead of you. He'll be down there too. <laughs> but our club was donating an ambulance to Waveland, Mississippi, but um, we want you to think about something while you drive down there. I said, what? And they said, well, we need a president to be in charge of the Rotary Club in North Crowley. I said, cool. I just joined a couple of years ago. What, what do you mean? Oh, this won't happen until 2007, 2000, or 2008, 2009. So uh, it's a long ways off. And I said, uh, I said, I said, no way. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a father of three kids, and I'm a business owner. I'm busy. I don't have time to to, to run this Rotary Club in North Raleigh. He said, Yes, you do. You'll figure it out, and uh, you're going to have lots of help along the way. And, and they were right. They, they, they're good salesmen, those guys. They, they talked me into it. I thought three years down the road, isn't that no big deal? Four years down the road, I'll, I'll be okay. Well, <laughs> just as I was about to take the helm of the Rotary Club in North Raleigh, the United States of America was shedding about 100,000 jobs a month. People were defaulting on mortgages and loans left and right. And the world was imploding before our, our very eyes, something like none of us have ever experienced or seen. But then I get a letter of hope and wisdom from our district and the Polio Foundation. And he said, Eric, as the new president of the Rotary Club in North Raleigh, we're asking all of the presidents to see if they can step up their giving for polio eradication to the tune of about $1,000 more per club for the next three years. Because you see, Eric, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have challenged Rotary with the matching gift. So whatever we raise, they basically are gonna make it three times that. So I thought, well, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Well, before I could worry about it too long and act like Chicken Little and the sky's crying <laughs> coming down, and how am I gonna do this? Terry Hutchins stands up. I'm not sure if he discussed it with Martha beforehand, but Terry stood up and he said, look, $3,000 over three years, I think Martha and I can handle that. I'm like, I'm like what? And then uh, Tom Owen, another former member of our club who's in the Cary Club now, he says, well, I think I can help out too. I said, well, what do you mean? He just said, I'm going to pledge $100 for the next three years. I thought, wow, this is so cool. And they did it. And that turned into about $9,900 on top of what our club already did out of the goodness of its hearts, all these great Rotarians in these clubs and the people that we talked to and what they did. I thought, this is so cool. I was, I was thrilled. Then we have uh, Linda Brooks comes up one day. And we're talking after a board meeting somewhere in that, that time frame. She says, you know, there's no money in the Alex Wilson uh, fund, but we've been funding these scholarships for several years and there's, there's no money left uh, from our former members uh, fund but the family and Linda Brooks got together right Linda and uh, was it twenty five thousand dollars that they were willing to pump back in to the Rotary Club in North Raleigh so we could continue that that was where is this man where's this stuff coming from it's like unbelievable so cool so it makes my job even easier I didn't even do anything I just happened to be lucky enough to have these wonderful Rotarians in the club so, then we move on uh, to some of the worst letters I had to read, um, and it was, and some of these were personal conversations, but there were Rotarians in our club 
that I think really had the metal to be really, really good Rotarians, and they were on their way. Uh, one was a fellow by the name of Greg Barnes, and uh, some of the older members of the club will remember him. But he was having trouble, and his bank decided they could no longer pay his dues for him. And so he was on the hook for that. He said, Eric, I just can't do it. And I've got people trying to help me meet me halfway or do whatever, but I, I just can't. I cannot do it. And I admire you Rotarians that have businesses that are still in business through this crazy time, and you're still able to do all of the good things that you do in the community. That kind of hurt me to hear that, but it made me feel good knowing that you realized you know, what we were doing. It's pretty cool. So, so in spite of the difficult times, we grew. We grew. I got a phone call one day from recently deceased past district governor, who was our district governor at the time, Don Buckner. He says, Eric, yeah, Don, what? He says, how would you like a new Rotarian to join your club? I said, yeah, we need new Rotarians all the time. I want five, I want six, I want more. He said, well, slow down. He says, uh, we got a guy, and he was, he's coming from Las Vegas, and uh, he wants to relocate into Raleighwood. And uh, he said, Raleighwood, I say that all the time. He wants to relocate to Raleigh. And uh, he's blind, he can't see, and he was a former concentration camp. A victim in Nazi Germany lost his family. They were exterminated. Uh, his brother and sister survived, and so did he. he. Came to the United States. He became a Rotarian. Always wanted to give back. And here's a 90-year-old guy who was so interested and loved Rotary so much that he wanted to join the best club in the country. So he joins our club. <laughs> it's cool. Then a little bit later on, we have uh, a guy show up at our Rotary club, and I'll never forget it. About ready to run a meeting, and I'm going over my list right here, and I'm checking it twice, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, who wrote this in? I don't know anything about this. I can't even read the handwriting. So I start to really panic, because that happens a lot to the, the president of the Rotary Club in North Raleigh. Things kind of come up there, but if you're cool and you're a good president, you do it right, you can. So I kept looking, then all of a sudden, somebody says, this, this Rotarian wants to talk to you. He's sitting right over there, the handsome guy in a plaid shirt, looking like, don't, don't point me out here, but I'm going to do it. He's got a bunch of bags of pecans in his arms. He says, I want to talk to you. He comes over with these pecans. I, I love pecans. And I'm thinking, man, you've already applied me all you need to. I love pecans. He says, well, I'm, I'm, you can't have these. I'm selling them. I said, selling them? For, for whom? What, what's the cause? I want to know what the cause is. He says, look, I just moved down here from New York, and I'm checking out the uh, Wake Forest Rotary Club, because at that time there was only one, I think. And uh, so I'm helping them with their fundraiser, and I'm selling pecans. This is so cool. He's selling pecans for a club he hasn't even joined. It's hard enough to get people in our club sometimes to take part in these fundraisers. I don't mean that against anybody personally, but, but it's like it's so cool. So I look over at President-elect Jim Morgan. And I said, what do you think? He goes, he's a member of the Rotary Club of North Raleigh. We're going to do whatever we can to sign him up. We signed him up. He's now our unofficial official photographer and many other things that, that Gene Hurst brings to the table. So it's very cool. A little bit later, we have uh, somebody fly south from the largest Rotary Club, I think, in the world, Anchorage, Alaska. Dee Dee Hurd is with her father right now. She joins the club, and it's like another lady joins our club. Man, want another breath of fresh air. She comes in and she says, uh, Mr. President, I don't mean to be pushy, push things on you guys, but I've got an idea that might spice up your club, make you guys have a little bit of fun. I said, we're all for it. What is it? I'll, I'll put it in the minutes right now. Oh, no, no, I want to make a presentation. So being like Matthew Kane, Dee Dee's very prepared. She had it all lined up. And it's called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And it has been a phenomenal part of the Rotary Club of North Raleigh's outside of Rotary social life. It's a, it's a really cool thing. So these new people coming in brought all kinds of new ideas, new things to our club. And all the while I'm thinking, Oh, I hope I get through this year and I don't really foul up this well-oiled machine. It just does such a great thing, and, and I love it. So, in my hand, I'm holding something here called the uh, Group Study Exchange from 2009. As president, you get invited to do a whole lot of things. Some people don't look at it as an invitation. They think it's like, ah, I gotta go do this, ah, I gotta go do that, and off you go. But if you buy into it, it can be a whole lot of fun. So our group study and exchange team that year was a group coming in from, had been here from Australia. And I'd gotten to meet a couple of them earlier. 
But we got to go to that classy North Carolina State University club and have a kind of a farewell dinner for them. And it was so cool. And they're all talking about their lives in Australia and what they were learning in the United States and sharing ideas and things like that. But one gentleman in particular, I'll never forget. And his name is uh, Corey Person. And Corey was a CSI agent back in Australia. And he goes, but right away, let me just tell you folks, it's not like it is on television. And we don't have all these wild cases. It's pretty cut and dry, and that's just the way that it is. But I enjoy my job. Somebody out in the audience raises their hand, and they said, Corey, what do you do for fun? And he, right away, he goes into, well, for fun, my favorite thing to do is to go to the coast. And what I love to do is just grab myself a Foster's beer and drink that Foster's beer. But after a while, you got to get kind of hot. You need to go jump in the water. So I jump in the water, and I swim around. But, you know, there's sharks there in that water. So when you see those sharks coming, you got to hustle and get out of the water. Well, then what do you do? I go grab another Foster's beer. I get hot, and I go back in the water. And I thought, this is what Rotary is all about. People having fun, telling stories, and sharing ideas. So it has been my wonderful opportunity to uh, serve this uh, club as president, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for all the tea in China. And I also want to thank Matthew Kane for my badge, so when I'm out there beating on doors trying to help out Rotary or raise money for Rotary or talk about Rotary or talk about anything, they're going to remember that I'm Eric Runwald because cutting edge engraving made me a very cool magnet badge. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.